Well, we're going to start today by lighting the first candle of the Advent wreath. Um, Tom, come on down. And this is the, the candle of, of hope. And we're just singing about hope. And boy, does the world need hope today, right? You know, so we talk about the hope that uh, is through Jesus Christ. And what is neat about this is, is this is something Christians all around the world are doing, um, is celebrating lighting of the Advent candle. And it helps to remind us to prepare our hearts, our minds, for the coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Tom, go ahead and light that, if you would. Um, and so I want you to think about um, the words that I'm going to read out of Isaiah. But I want you to think about them with the idea of light, that we are a light of hope to a world of darkness. We really are. You are. You can be a difference wherever God has placed you, you know, that you can influence that person, that community, that group of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says in Isaiah 9 2, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Let's pray. Father, as we look forward to the birth of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray even as we've started this lighting of the Advent wreath, the candles, Lord, that we, we'll be focused on the, the light of your love, that light that shine into each of our lives. And help us, Lord, to, to reflect that, to be light to those people around us. God, prepare my heart. Prepare each of our hearts today that we, we might have a sense of joy and of gladness as we anticipate the coming of you, Lord Jesus Christ, when you come back again. For you are our hope, our strength, our salvation. In Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen. During the time that we were closed up and meeting online, I sent out a song for us to enjoy together, for those of you who were following the happenings. But um, I wanted to sing it for you this morning, and uh, soon I hope that you'll sing it back to me. This morning, uh, just focus on the lyrics and praise God as you listen.
good stuff, isn't it? Wow, you know, to praise like that. Well, can you believe it is the first Sunday of Advent? Wow, I mean, it just seems like <clears throat> it comes quickly. But Advent's a time of preparing our hearts. It really is. That's the idea of, um, of self-examination, of preparing ourselves for Jesus' second coming, right? When he comes back again. And you know what? It might be before Christmas. I don't know. It might be before we're done here today. That'd be okay too, wouldn't it? Then you wouldn't have to worry about where you're going to get lunch. So there you go. Yeah. Well, this season's a great time of the year. It's probably my favorite time of the year. Um, the hustle, the bustle, the food. Uh, I was up putting lights on the roof yesterday, you know, just all those kinds of things. But I like all the other seasons too, you know, but this seems kind of special. Um, but this Sunday is kind of a transition Sunday for me. It's kind of a transition of Thanksgiving into Christmas. You know, it's that kind of in-betweener. Um, and that's why some of the people are still gone, you know, getting, coming back, traveling from Thanksgiving. Um, but it's a time, I think, that our hearts ought to be overflowing from Thanksgiving and yet having great sense of anticipation of the joy that's coming in the Lord Jesus. So it's kind of got that feeling. And, and I want to remind us, each of us, about uh, no matter what your plans are this season. Now, I don't, I don't know how you handle COVID exactly. You know, I don't know if you gathered for Thanksgiving or you didn't, or, you know, Christmas, you're going to travel, you're not going to travel. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how you figured that out in your own thinking. But I want to remind you, no matter how you handle that, keep your eyes on Jesus. That's what really matters. Keep your eyes on him. And then I want you to enjoy this time of the year, this season. You know, so many people I hear say, well, I can't wait till this year is over. Don't. Enjoy now. We have now. I don't know if we're going to have next week, but we got now, folks. So enjoy now. You know, enjoy the season that God has given to us um, to celebrate. So I want to shift from this Thanksgiving aspect and kind of an anticipation of joy. And the way I want to do that is through Psalm 100. So if you have your Bibles, you might want to turn to Psalm 100. Uh, that's really where we're going to hang out today. But let me read it for you. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Well, let's pray. Father, as we come to this portion of your scripture, the very inerrant, infallible word of God. It's a passage, Lord, that we've read many times. Many people probably memorized them. Uh, these verses, but help us again today just to kind of meditate upon your word and to allow your word to work in our hearts. Had we come to confess that we don't know it all, <laughs> we are not infallible, but you are. And so teach us today, Lord. Help us to really examine our own heart and, and just to get something that, that you want to say to us, that your blessed Holy Spirit wants to nudge us and and so that we would have spiritual ears to hear what you're saying. And then to apply it to our lives. God, not just to walk out the doors and say, yeah, that was good. But then, God, to, to really live the word. To flesh it out in a world of darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you've got that text before you, I want you to notice something. Notice what we are to base our thanksgiving on. You know, not... Did I have enough turkey? Now, folks, I did. <laughs> I did my part, okay? Or, you know, that you have a nice bank account or that you have good health. Now, all those things are good, and we ought to be thankful for all of those, right? But all of those are very temporal. They're not going to last. As much turkey as I ate, you know what was really strange? It wasn't long I had another appetite came. That's kind of how it works, isn't it? Temporal. But when you look at the text, look at all the times that you see the word Lord. 
Just glance that over, see? Swore to the Lord, the Lord, Lord, Lord. See, all of that. The basis of our joy and thanksgiving, then, is the Lord. It's not your circumstances. It's not how you're feeling. It's not all our basis of thanksgiving and joy is in the Lord. You know, I, I think we need to remember that we got here with God's help. It wasn't just us doing our thing and, boy, we worked hard. Enough. God, and he is the provider of the blessings we have. Every good and perfect gift comes from our Heavenly Father. We need to be reminded of that, right? So as we focus in on this psalm, um, there's lots of ways to look at Psalm 100, but there's five words I want us to look at today. There's five of the words that come out of, of, of this psalm. And so if you have your little pamphlet or your little bullet, we're going to fill those out in just a couple of moments. But Psalm one, or Psalm 100, verse 1, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Psalm 98, 6, listen to what it says. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn, shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Did you see the word? The word is, go ahead and put it up there. Tom. Shout. That's the word, is shout. Um, I love that in, in Psalm 98, 6, with the trumpet and the blast of the rams, I'm going to shout. It's the shout of the force of a trumpet. Blast. Now, when I was in junior high, uh, I played the saxophone, okay? So I played it at Roosevelt Junior High, and then I moved and played it at Ridgeview Junior High. Now, that was kind of cool because I played in the dance band thing. Yeah. So if you're in the regular band, and I was in the band, the orchestra, all that stuff, but you had a, you had a stand look like this. You know, everybody did. But when you were in the dance band, you're in the saxophones around the front row. You got a, it looks like Lawrence Well. Remember, you know, how those stands were? That was cool. And we wore white dinner jackets. Yeah. Oh, it was cool. Yeah, it was, you know. And when you did your part, you stood up. And you played your part, you know. And then you'd sit down and they'd go on with the song. But the trumpeters would sit back behind us. And sometimes when they would stand up, they would get carried away. And, oh, man, it would just blast you. And back then I had hair. and My hair would just go forward. It was so black and warm. Well, here's the picture, if you will. Um, it's not the worship of silent meditation. Now, that's, there's a place for that. But that's not what he's talking about here. This is the sound of great joy that's being proclaimed. It's the shout of joy to the Lord that comes from the very depths of who you are. It's not the person says, oh, praise the Lord. You know, oh, oh praise God. You know, that's weird. You know, and, and you know, I, I had a friend who was a pastor. <laughs> he's in glory now. And we'd play golf or something. He'd miss a putt or hit a bad shot. And he go, oh, praise God. And I thought, what do you mean? You know, I'd say, oh, man, I messed up. But he was all, you know, praise God. And I thought, John, come on. You know, this, is, this, is, this isn't that. This is, this is counting your blessings. It's recognizing how good God has been to you. And all of a sudden, you're overwhelmed with that. And when you get overwhelmed with his presence that way, and you just can't help but praise him. You ever had that happen to you? You ever been there where, where all of a sudden you just start seeing the blessings of God, you know? And maybe you start to tear up and you just are overwhelmed. And that's the picture here of great joy. <laughs> you know, as, as believers, man, we got to be joyful, you know? There ought to be something about that, that we shout out. And now we don't shout at people. You know, driving down the street and you see a guy, you know, a homeless guy on the side and you throw a track at him and shout, you better turn to Jesus. No, it's not that kind of shout. It's a shout of, God, what you're doing in my life. You know, you marvel at that. And then it says, you want to share that goodness where? With all people. Did you see that? Shout for joy to the Lord, what? All the earth, all the earth. So wherever you go, you're letting people know about Christ. Wherever you go, you've got that look, that countenance that shows the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. There you go, right? Sing praise. Everybody, sing praises. That's, that's the picture, this shouting and of great joy. 
Then he goes on in verse 2, and worship the Lord with gladness. So the second word we're going to put in there is worship. Worship. He doesn't say worship the church. You know, some people do that. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say worship the Bible. Right? He doesn't say worship the pastor. Or worship this wonderful season. It says worship the Lord with gladness. So we don't worship the Bible. We worship the God of the Bible. We worship the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Let me read a different translation. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Now, we want to worship him, right? So we want to worship how? By being a living sacrifice. But how do I do that? Our service is to worship the Lord. So how do I serve God? How do I serve God? You know how you serve God? You serve God by serving others. That's how you do it. It's not like the old movies where, you know, I'm going to serve God, so I bring out the, you know, all these vegetables and lay here and I'm doing this and that. No, you serve God by serving other people. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So any act of service can be worship. You know that? Any act of service can be worship. Our service is not out of a feeling of obligation. You don't serve God because you're afraid of him. You know, like, oh, man, God's going to drop the hammer on me if I don't serve him. I, no, we don't worship because of fear or guilt or to, this is the big one. You know, we serve God so um, everybody will know we serve God. You know how that is? So we serve God so people will, or get attention for us. Oh, they're so good Christian. Look how they serve God. Oh, yes. You know, that's that we don't serve that way. But he's talking about service flowing from a heart of worship. Our love for God. It's falling deeper in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where our worship flows from. And then he says, worship the Lord with what? Gladness. Gladness. Marsh and I have been married a while, uh, over 45 years. I know how long I do. And we dated five years before that. You guys know our story, or some of you do at least. Um, I remember our wedding very well. I don't remember a lot of things from years ago, but I do remember our wedding very well. And, and we had a big wedding. We probably had three or 400 people there, so it's pretty good size. Um, and... Boy, I remember coming in and standing there and uh, I remember looking at all the people and top and just, you know, lots of folks. And then I remember watching Marcia come down the aisle. And uh, she looked beautiful. And man, I was so excited. And, you know, it was so fun. And it was the best day of my life. And I remember it so very vividly. Let me just say this. Our worship is to be like a wedding, not a funeral. And sometimes worship in Baptist churches looks a little bit like a funeral. And man, it should. That was a celebration. <laughs> I mean, I was just like, yeah. That's how worship is to be. Why? It's the joy of our salvation. It's that we are in Christ. Man, folks, it, 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 you know, <laughs> as the old pastor said, if that doesn't flip your switch, your switch is broken. You know? That we have the joy, so we're to worship. So that's what he says in the psalm. We are to shout and we're to worship. And then he goes on in verse 2, and come before him with joyful songs. And the word I want to look at there for a moment is come. We need to come in Acts chapter 16, verse 24 and 25. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. 
About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. You remember the story, the Philippian jailer, right? And so um, they throw him in jail, and this isn't, this isn't a nice jail. It's the inner part of the jail, actually, they put him in, put him in stocks and put him in. It's all nasty and dark. And, and yet, even in prison, what do we have? Paul and Silas singing. They're in the very dungeon, you know, it's terrible, and they're singing. Don't let circumstances rob you of joy and of singing, of praising. Don't let it happen, you know, whether it's the corona or whatever it is. Don't let things rob you. Don't, don't, don't let the evil one snatch your joy. But come into his presence. That's what we've done this morning, isn't it? We've come into his presence. That he is in this place, folks. But you don't have to be in a church. We can each come into his presence, can't we? That's what the psalmist would say. He says, come. Come into his presence. Isaiah 51 says this in verse 11. Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear, and they will be filled with joy and gladness. Outbursts of joy and of gladness in the presence of God. Not weeping and, and whining and complaining, but singing hymns and songs and spiritual songs unto the Lord and worshiping Him. So he says, shout for joy. Worship with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Isn't that a great picture? Isn't that just a neat picture? One of the neat things when I was in, in college um, was we, we would have um, Bible conference every year in February. It's kind of like if you're familiar with Moody Founders Week or something like that. And we'd all gather, in, and at that time, we would gather into the gymnasium with the bleachers and all that at the time. They'd set up a stage out here. And they would have, like Warren Wiersbe would come and speak and um, David Jeremiah's dad, he always came and hung out and spoke, and Gene Getz, and just different people from all around. And they would come, and, and they would uh, do this Bible conference, and, and they would lead, and they'd have some people come in and do the special music and lead in it, and everybody would be singing, and it was, it was just great joy. And that's the picture here of believers gathered and, and shouting and worshiping God as we come into his presence. I don't think we have a clue of what it means to be in his presence. I mean to really be in his presence. I see so many Christians just sit with scowls on their faces. And, like, mm. and what are they doing? They're missing the joy. They're missing the wedding. They'd rather be at a funeral. And he's coming to my presence. You're in the presence of God. So come with joy. He goes on there and he says um, in verse 3, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And what I want us to, the word to look at there is the word know, know, or knowledge. You see, worship needs to be intelligent. Needs to be, it, it, I get so tired of, of, of Christians who, who you know, think we don't have to think. You know, oh, I just love God, and that's enough. No, we need to think, too. There's a whole world that thinks your mind is just oatmeal, you know, and that's not true. We, we believe what we believe because there's reason we believe. Now, yeah, there's a step of faith, but we have, there's evidence to believe what we believe. And so we have to know. Worship must be intelligent. You've got to know who he is to know how to worship him. You need to know who God is, and you need to know who we are that we're created in the image and likeness of God, that we've been marred by sin, that redemption is in Christ. You, know, we need to, you need to know something. You need to know that it is God who knit you together, that you are not an accident, that you weren't just random happening, that God put you together on the inside and the outside, and that this morning God knows you better than anybody knows you. God knows you. And he loves you, and he wants to have that connection with you. In, first, in, in um, Colossians chapter 1, 
the Bible says, all things were created by him and for him. And you know what's really pretty neat? He's still making us. You know? He's not satisfied with your temper. Always. He's not always satisfied with your attitude. Is he always? Not satisfied with weak areas in my life or in your life. But he's still working on me. And he's still working on you. That's a good thing, isn't it? He's still working on us. So we need to be able to thank God for who he is. And, you know, we've looked at that a lot, right? Who he is, you know, the great I am, and all of those attributes. But also to thank him for who you are and thank him for who you are becoming. Isn't that good? That you are becoming the man, the woman of God that he wants you to be. That, that's, God's still working. Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So we are the sheep, and we need to gather around the shepherd and let him be the good shepherd. So that go back to that verse, the last part of, of uh, verse 3, and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So we need to gather around the shepherd, right, to get to know him better. And how do you get to know him? Well, you got to spend some time in his word. Allow him to speak to you through his word. We don't have to guess what God's like. He's revealed himself to us. But you got to get into the word, all right? And when you do that, you kind of learn who you are too. And then we can really worship him because we know who he is. We're not just worshiping some idol out there, but the true and living God. Well, then he goes on, verse 4 and 5. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So the fifth word to fill in there is the word enter. Enter. And you and I can enter the very holy of holies because they've been thrown open by a new and living way. You know over in John 14, 6, right? When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and life, no one comes to the Father but by me. When he says, I am the way, that's kind of a two-pronged word, the way he's using it there. I am the way. I am the only way that you're going to have a relationship with a holy God. It's not by anything, by being good, by going to, you know, by meditating, by humming, by doing anything. Through Jesus Christ and him alone, that's the only way. But then he's also the way to live. I'm the way, but I'm also the way to live. He, then, is the source of our thanksgiving and of our praise and of our joy. It's the person of Jesus Christ. And then he goes on, verse 5, let me re read that. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. He's not some fickle God. He's not one way today and another way tomorrow. He's not fickle. But he is faithful. He is God Almighty. That's whose presence we come into. And you know, somebody said, well, I don't know what God's will is in my life. Well, let me just give you part of it. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-3. Always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong in Christ Jesus. That's it, pretty straight, isn't it? So you say, well, I don't like that. Well, then talk to God. That's his will. That's what he expects from you as a believer. That's what he expects from me as well. Well, I, you know, as I was kind of going through some of this, I really pray that this season will be very meaningful to you and your families and that you will truly enjoy this time. And really, I want you from now on for this Advent season to really focus to enjoy our wonderful Savior. You know? Now, as a response, I'm going to read that psalm again for you. And I want you to listen to those five words, okay? And just let your heart flow with thanksgiving, with joy. But here's what I'd like, I'd like you to do. I'd like you to pick out one or two of those words you're going to work on this week. Okay? You don't have to tell anybody, 
but it'd be a good idea if you did. And then that person holds you accountable in about three days, calls you up. Well, how are you doing on that? Oh, we need that, right? So I want you to pick out one or two of those words that God would say, you know, why don't you work in that area this week? So listen as I read. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We're his people, the sheep of his pasture. And enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your scripture, your eternal word. And I pray if there's some here today, maybe who are hearing these words for the first time, or maybe all of a sudden in their heart they're saying, you know what? I don't think I know Jesus that way. That, Lord, that they would turn from their sin today and ask you, Lord, to forgive them and come into their life and be their Lord and Savior. And they can do that right now wherever they're at. Just in the quietness of their heart. But be very meaningful and turn to you, Jesus. Others, Lord, we've heard this psalm a lot of times. But help us right now, God, to be sensitive to maybe one of these words that your Holy Spirit is just kind of impressing upon us and say, you know what? Why don't you work on that one a little bit this week? Why don't you come before me that way? Why don't you enter into my presence? Why don't you shout for the joy? Whatever it might be, Lord. I pray your Holy Spirit right now will speak because our hearts are receptive. We need to hear from you, Lord, again. And then, Lord, may we respond and follow through as followers of Jesus Christ, shining as lights in a world of darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand, please? And as we sing a closing song, a couple songs, um, if you would, if you want to come to the altar and pray, that'd be great, or have someone pray with you, talk with you. But let's just really allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts as we worship him uh, through singing, as the psalm talked about. into practice what we've just been talking about today. And so we're going to sing one more song, but we're going to sing it like the Psalm 100 we talked about, right? Now that doesn't mean you scream it, but it means we just have a sense of joy and, and excitement. You know, the joy of Christ in our life. 
and, and we, we have that in our heart. We just need to let our face know it. And so let's just do that as we uh, celebrate, you know, who we are in Christ as we sing this together. It's Christmas, y'all. Sing with us. can't help but think of somebody special when you sing that song, as uh, he was our music director here who wrote that song years back. Well, we're ready for the Advent season. We're ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So prepare your hearts. And some of that may be some lament, maybe some times of sorrow to think through, but prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ, for indeed he is coming back. Let's pray. Lord, again, I thank you for being here today. Lord, that we might be in your very presence, in your midst. God, for knowing us and loving us. And now may we share that love with the world around us. God, forgive us when we whine and complain. But God, we want to be people who, who are filled with the Spirit of God. who are controlled by your Spirit, by the way that we live, by the responses we give by the joy that we share. So God, I thank you for this week, the opportunities, the challenges that are coming our way. And Lord, that we know that we are held in your very palm of your hand. So Lord, we love you. And as we walk out of these doors now, we do realize it's a mission field. So God, use us this week for your kingdom. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless.